Good morning, friends. Welcome to Wake Up in the Word. Thanks for joining me this morning. Merry Christmas. Say it often. Say it loud. Let everybody know Jesus is the reason for this season. In light of that, I want you to grab a good cup of coffee, the Word of God, John chapter number six. We're going to look at a number one of those great miracles of Jesus. While you're getting there, I want to say how proud I am of you guys, the First Baptist Crusaders, and what an awesome job you did last night just playing a game of basketball over there at Fairfield Middle School and for all the friends and family that were out there, congratulations on uh, moving along in your season and demonstrating Christ-like character. You wanted to slip once or twice, but listen, you held your own, and God bless you for it. We're learning a lot. Well, anyhow, back to the scripture in John chapter number 6. Beginning in verse 16, we have the story of another one of these signature miracles of Jesus. John doesn't take as much time or space dealing with this miracle as some of the other gospel authors, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but he does point out something about how Jesus is once again pointing to himself as the Messiah. So in verse verse 16, it says, when evening came, his disciples went down into the sea. Remember, this is uh, contrasting that Jesus is still on the mountainside praying. Remember, he withdrew when they tried to forcibly make him king. It's not time for that yet. After feeding the 5,000, the crowds were ready to install Jesus and run out the Romans. But that's not what Jesus was here for. So he's up on the mountainside praying. He's told the disciples to go to the next location. And so here's what they did. They go down to the sea, got into a boat, John writes, and started across the sea to Capernaum. Now, this was nothing unusual for them. Remember, some of these guys are fishermen. They're very familiar with this body of water, the Sea of Galilee. They know it well. They know boating very well. They don't shrink at the idea of going across this body of water we'd call a large lake at night because they've probably done it before. That's no big deal. So it says darkness had already set in, but Jesus had not yet come to them. Well, a high wind arose, and the sea began to churn. After they'd rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea. He was coming near the boat, and they were afraid. But he said to them, it is I, don't be afraid. And this is the reason that John really includes this miracle. He wants to point out that Jesus, once again, showing his power over nature, says, it is I. And remember, throughout John's gospel, you're going to start picking up these I am statements from Jesus as he lays out his Messiahship. And it says, then they were willing to take him on board. And at once the boat was at the shore where they were heading. Now, if you want the lengthier expression of this story, you go over to the Gospel of Matthew, which I believe was written much earlier. Matter of fact, you can find that Matthew was written in the common language. It was one written in Aramaic as well as Greek in those early days. May have been, uh, most say Mark is the earliest gospel. I think Matthew is close behind with an expression designed especially for the Jews and to show them the fulfillment of Jesus as the Jewish Messiah. But in chapter 14 of Matthew, you remember we hear that something else was going on in this incident, something that John probably didn't want to mention, and it wasn't important for the Holy Spirit to force him to do that because he, he's probably saying, yeah, Peter, remember when you embarrassed us all when we were out there on the sea? Okay, yeah, we won't talk about that. But we have the full account by Matthew in chapter 14 of his gospel where it says that when Jesus came to them on the water in the middle of this storm, it was Peter who also said in Matthew 14, in verse number 28, I believe it is, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come, come on. And so climbing out of the boat, Jesus uh, has invited Peter to come and walk on the water with him. And Peter started walking on the water, Matthew records, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the strength of the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus reached out his hand, caught hold of him and said to him, oh, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. 
So the, the stories are together. John doesn't mention the incident with Peter, but both of them demonstrate something that's quite interesting. And that's the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the Lord. This is the Messiah who was promised, and he's making it so plain to them by performing miracle after miracle. He's got power to heal. He's got the power to uh, control nature, to multiply food when needed. He has power over demons. He's showing also he has power over life and death. He's demonstrating what they need to see about his life, that he certainly is the one. He is the Messiah, the Lord of all. He's going to follow up these miracles with some amazing statements about himself. It's kind of like illustrating what he's about to teach. We're going to get into that teaching tomorrow, and boy, it gets deep at times. You'll not want to miss it. So let's keep walking through the life of Jesus right here as we wake up in the Word. So if you like what we're doing, hey, invite a friend. Share this with someone. Click that button to rumble it or like it or send it somewhere else. And let's keep lifting up Jesus. Why? Because remember, he is the reason for our Christmas season. Well, God bless you, my friends. I'll see you again right here tomorrow as we wake up in God's Word.